Morgan Tonart. Uh, Morgan uh, was uh, MA student at Tel Aviv University in 2012 and uh, 2014 in Middle Eastern and African Studies. Her thesis entitled uh, American Muslims and Contemporary uh, ha -ha Halal Comedy was written under the uh, supervision of uh, Professor Shadid. An article uh, passed on this thesis will be published in, in the journal uh, Islam and Christian Muslim Relations in January 2016. Please. Good evening. And I joined the other, Professor Shavit. Congratulations on your new book. So now for something completely different, I'm going to give you a brief overview of American Muslim stand-up comedy. I hope everyone is familiar with the term stand-up comedy. I'm not going to explain it. Uh, I'm using this terminology, American Muslim stand-up comedy, but I find it myself problematic as it is over-inclusive in the sense that it refers to comedians who are only Muslim in name. And so we have here a kind of comedy that's more cultural, ethnic, oriented that's mainly secular, and it refers to comedians who are practicing Muslims and integrate their materials into an Islamic framework. Now, both trains get visibility and recognition in the beginning of the 21st century, somehow responding to new realities affecting their community at large. Both are very similar in the way they aim to reach the American mainstream, continuing a long history of American minority comedy. Before achieving full acceptation and inclusion into the social political mainstream, minorities live on the margin, and humor serves them, among other purposes, of course, as a coping mechanism in the face of discrimination, perceived or not. Jews and African Americans, among other minorities, have used stand up comedy throughout the 20th century as a way to, re to re relocate themselves into the social fabric. Stand up enable them as non-WASP, non-white Anglo-Saxon Protestants to renegotiate the national narrative in this famous nation of immigrants. They became representatives of disenfranchised groups, setting parameters of cohesion and self-identification. Nowadays, given the pervasive negative representations in pop culture, media, political discourses and policies, it's not the turn of, perceive, of perceived and not perceived, but Middle Easterns and Muslims to redefine the idea and ideal of the national narrative. So in a way, both cultural and practicing Muslims relate to the mainstream in the same fashion. They want to deconstruct stereotypes as a way to restore their humanity and place as fellow citizens. Now, practicing Muslim comedians obey by religious ideals and principles, and their aspirations as comedians are different. When, first of all, um, these comedians want to combine it and balance stand-up comedy with Islamic values. And I mean, if they try to do so, it means that comedy and Islamic prescriptions are not incompatible. And when you look at popular Islamic websites, uh, you'll find fatwas that directly tackle the issue of permissibility of humor in Islam. And they set criteria to condition joking. No mockery, no mocking of God, the revelation, the prophets, or other human beings. No backbiting and no intimidation. Propriety, reasonability, and conformity to the truth. These criteria are not incompatible with the hallmarks of stand-up comedy. And in fact, the topical freedom that the journal confers entails individual responsibility to choose proper subjects, not go over the edge, and not use profanity. These comedians understand this responsibility very well, and most of them are well-versed in Islamic teachings and frame their career within these parameters. Now, we can discuss their materials along two lines, inward and outward. Inward, the production targeting the in-group, their co-religionists, and the out-group, the American mainstream. As I said earlier, when they address the out-group, they mainly want to downplay Muslim otherness and help their reintegration into the social fabric. In the vein of Bill Cosby, they want to show that American Muslims live normal lives. And among the issues they tackle, you find societal ones and universal ones, politics, spread of negative cliches, and interfaith relations. Through their political jokes, they comply with what Tariq Ramadan calls the loyal citizenship, which means that they will criticize the political structure for its wrong procedures and praise it when it takes a right decision. So for example, under Bush's term, 
You find jokes highlighting policies that most American Muslims would deplore under this very administration. The war on terror, war in Iraq, uh, discrimination, lack of freedom of dissent. And this disillusion with the establishment led them to publicly express their hope for a better political environment and endorse candidates in the presidential campaign in 2004 and 2008. And along this criticism, you find them stress the exceptional political circumstances in the US, especially in comparison with those existing in some Muslim majority countries. So in a way, through these jokes, they express the concern for the well-being of their fellow citizens and the future of their society. But it would be wrong to assume that all these comedians have political jokes. For example, comedian Baba Ali does not tackle politics because for him, the priority number one for a community is how to return to proper practice to Islam. On another level, they deconstruct stereotypes uh, that are fed by ignorance about their community and religion. And what that threatens the most, their belonging to the American society is the one that prevents uh, them as a homogenous religious community rooted in violence that treats women in a backward way. And this cliche of violent Muslims is best exemplified at the nation's borders, the airport. That's why you have airport jokes that constitute the majority uh, not the majority, but a recurrent uh, feature of their work. And in this line of thought, we can see that as the very act of performing as Muslims just goes against the view that humor is uh, an abstract principle to Muslims. Here, the comic performance is an act of rehumanization. Let's see an example. Am I supposed to do this? Uh, touch the screen? No, I don't touch the screen. Yeah. And finally, when they're addressing the odd group, uh, we can see that they do not live in isolation. They reach to people about the faith, which is hardly surprising given the centrality of religion in the American public space. And they do so through collaboration, emphasizing similarities, understanding and accepting differences. Now, when they address the in-group, um, they mainly use stand-up comedy as a means to rediscuss the meaning of being an American Muslim and as an educational tool for the creation of a role model community. So by highlighting uh, moral values and decent behaviors, they promote their ideal of an American Ummah. Now, these ambitions should not be decontextualized from a contemporary Muslim scholarship. And the jokes include issues that are very sensible in the development of the community. Divorce, diversity, lack of Islamic knowledge, failure to include new members into the community, uh, and inertia. So first of all, uh, the eco scholar uh, Omar Farouk Abdella, when they advocate for a united community that tra transcends ethnic and cultural boundaries, and they do pursue this ideal without completely abandoning the ethnic and cultural component of their identity, but they present it in a way that crosses laughing boundaries and is intelligible to others. And when you look at the very cast of Alamin Mifani, they reflect the more the mosaic of the American community. You have an, an Arab-American, an African-American, and a South Asian-American converts and born Muslims. 
So through their work, they aim to fight against the racism existing in the community and bring forward a pan-ethnic Islamic heritage. And one way of doing so is through marriage, inter-ethnic unions. Now on another level, they stress the importance of Islamic knowledge. Um, to them, I mean, in this way, they, they echo again Tariq Ramadan's comment that Muslims in the West face a problem of perception, the way they are perceived, the way they perceive themselves, and the way they are dealing with this. Knowledge and self-knowledge, so in a way Islamic knowledge, are keys to respond to identity and society issues with great confidence. And in this line of thought, that's why they want to contrast culture and religion, and they see any attempt to intermingle the two as a great source of confusion for Muslim and non-Muslims alike. And again, take this reasoning a bit further, knowledge is essential, but the way knowledge is imparted is equally important. Any failure to explain oneself will be critical for the development of the community. Um, and we'll see another example here. Uh, I hope I do it right. No, not, not here, not here. Here, all right. So as you can see, uh, that's very funny, but it relates to a very, a very serious issue. Uh, I, I can scream. <laughs> Not at all? Can you hear? No? Yeah? Good. Um, so I'm, I'm moving on. Um, there is another issue that these comedians address, and that's the problem of inertia. These comedians want to see Muslims represented on all fronts, social, political, and cultural. Um, and again, I'm using the same example, but they echo Salah uh, Abdullah. Yeah? Can, can, can I talk? Yeah? All right. Um, Deco Farouk Abdallah, when he says that Muslims must be producers of cultures, not passive consumers of it. And they need to defend their own interests into the American mainstream. That's really important. And when you look at uh, comedian Omar Reagan, uh, in one of his most famous routines, he changes Michael Jackson's thriller into It's Time for Fajr. He tries to change uh, haram songs into halal songs. That's a really interesting phenomenon. And here again, uh, with Preacher Moss, uh, an African-American uh, comedian active in the collective Alam in Mifani, he explains the need for, for being active and contributing to the society and the community.
And finally, I mean, obviously they address other issues and they're very numerous. Um, there's one here that's very interesting because it's often pushed into the background. That's the fact that converts form a growing segment in the community and face challenges that most born Muslims fail to understand. Uh, for example, Preacher Moss, this comedian, recalls on stage his personal journey as a convert and the, the struggle he had with his family to accept his conversion and the lack of honest guidance. So here the comedians are calling on other Muslims for inclusion, support, education, and accepting these new converts with their lack of, of knowledge. So here I gave you a brief overview of, uh, of the issues they address and how um, they reflect their aspirations as both Americans and Muslims when addressing the art group they seek uh, their reintegration in the social fabric and claim their place as American citizens. And when addressing the in-group, the core religionists, they promote their ideal of American Ummah that is inclusive, educated, uh, united, and um, active on all fronts. So now at the end of the day, there's one question we could ask is whether these comedians engage in da'wah or not. Well, so far you don't have a clear answer. Uh, you have comedian uh, Omar Reagan, who's fervent proponent of Dawa on stage and off stage and actually collaborating with the Canadian Dawa Association in dealing with celebrities. But not all comedians are very explicit about the issue. As our Usman, we just saw a minute ago, uh, mentions a practice but never advises on ways to carry out Dawa. And often when he mentions a practice, it's intertwined with criticism. It's not really not clear. But all in all, we can say that the fact of dispelling um, cliches and the creation of a role model community and two practices that have high potential in Dawa and the use of um, convert stories could also play a role. But again here, Preacher Moss reacts against uh, the use of convert stories. So that's a question that needs to be addressed in further research that are going to be really interesting. Now I'm going to conclude and say that that Muslim Salem comedy is a new phenomenon still developing and I have no idea what, which direction is going to take so we might have a completely different discussion in a few years. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, our last speaker is